Welcome back, my name is Olive and I'm here to guide you through an explorative yoga class. So what it is, it kind of involves movement, a really playful attitude towards more traditional kind of poses and sequences where we have the room to just play, but it's also got holds. So positions where we will just hold and see how we feel in them, listen to our body. So I really encourage you to kind of come in with it with a playful attitude, see where your body's at today and just play. And yeah, I hope you gain quite a lot from it. So all you need in terms of equipment is a brick and we're gonna start in a tabletop position. We're going to start practice just coming into a tabletop position. So you're just taking hands down to the ground, underneath your shoulders, bringing hips over the knees. And maybe let's just go for a tuck in the toes for now. So we're just going to play around with a little bit of movement into our wrists, just creating some kind of circular movements. Clockwise or anti-clockwise doesn't matter because we will change it up in a second. We're just kind of alternating the pressure into your fingertips and then into the heel of your hand. Cool. change direction. Almost see if you can practice spider fingers as well. So really trying to push the fingertips into the ground, almost like bringing up the middle knuckles. No worries if not. Cool. And then coming all the way back to stillness. And then this time we're gonna turn our fingertips outwards ever so slightly. So thinking about taking them out to maybe about 45 degrees. So if I was facing the camera, it would look like this and then again same kind of thing into the wrists these nice circular movements now what we're kind of doing here is just changing up the angle of the wrist changing up the angle in the shoulder so we're looking at more external rotation and then change direction so you might have some new sensations cropping up into the body just kind of see what's going on nice and then back to stillness, this time we're going to look more at internal rotation. So turn the fingertips inwards to about 45 degrees, as much as you're comfortable with. And again, find those kind of circles. If the heel of the hand needs to lift off a little bit, that's completely fine. Allow a little micro bend to the elbows as well if you need, especially if you are hypermobile like me, into your elbow joints. Cool, change direction if you haven't. Lovely, and then we're gonna reset. Just turn your fingertips forwards, come to sit down onto your ankles, or you can stay more upright. And we're just gonna move the wrist in the opposite direction. So extend your right hand in front of you, fingertips come down to the ground, and just lightly, gently apply a bit of pressure to pull back. Breathing. Release, and then just move that right hand up and down a couple of times. You can even do it with the fist, so thumb sort of underneath or on top. Might feel a little bit stronger into the forearms. And then release, shake it out. Same thing on the other side. Left hand in front and take fingers to the ground. Lightly pull back, breathing, breathing, breathing. And then as you release, just moving the hand up and down a couple of times. More motion is lotion for the joints, so that's what we're going with. Again, you can make a fist, thumb in or out. Cool. Okay, from here, when you're ready, come back to your tabletop position. And then we're just going to walk the hands over towards the left-hand side. So you're actually going to come off your mat and onto the ground. You're going to take your left elbow down to the floor and slide your right fingertips away from you. So the arm is straight, you're onto your fingertips. Keep the butt above the knees and you're just gonna lightly bring the chin down to your chest. So try to almost keep as much pressure into the right fingertips as possible, just to kind of feel perhaps some more engagement moving down the right side of the body. Feeling the breath there as well. One more breath. And then looking forwards and walking yourself all the way back to tabletop before moving over to the other side. So again, we take right elbow down to the ground, off the mat, left fingertips slide away, draw the chin to the chest, finding the breath here, creating that pressure, that contact into the fingers. Breathing here. And then when you're ready, slowly moving all the way back up into your tabletop, 
maybe just have a little wriggle around on all fours and then when you're ready moving into your downward facing dog so in your downward dog it's completely up to you how you want to move you can just start by simply pedaling out the feet maybe moving into the hips a little bit you can shake through the head you can bend the knees a little bit and think about sinking the bum back to the heels if you wanted to do any three-legged dogs you're welcome to so where one leg floats behind you you can move to the ankle you can move to the hips just whatever you do on one leg make sure you do it on the other as well just to explore how sides are feeling how the body is feeling okay so coming back to downward dog we're just going to have a little play with some movement in and out of down dog and high plank so from your downward facing dog, lift up high onto your tiptoes, roll the shoulders forward, stacking shoulders over the wrists into plank. So make sure shoulders are into neutral, not letting the butt and hips collapse and it's not too high. You've got this lovely neutral line and then bend the knees, send the weight back into down dog. And we'll go again, rolling forwards, high plank, looking in front, bend the knees all the way back, downward facing dog. This time we can incorporate a little bit of something different from your downward dog. You're gonna do a half circular movement towards the right hand side and then come into high plank. And then half circular movement to the left, bend the knees, send it back, down dog. Let's just do it one more time. Half circle to the left, come forwards, high plank. Half circle to the right, back to down dog. Okay, lovely. From here, tiptoe the feet all the way in, so they end up behind the wrists. Now you can take your block and place it maybe between your chest and thighs. Let the head relax, let it hang. Fingertips either resting to the ground, or you can hold opposite elbows, it's completely up to you. And maybe you're just still as you breathe, or maybe you do gently kind of rock yourself side to side. Totally up to you. Take one more breath here. And then release the block off to the side. Take the hands to the ankles. Start to slowly walk yourself all the way up to standing. And when you get to standing, just have a little wriggle, have a little shake out through the arms, through the legs. And we're just going to do some sort of standing spinal kind of movement. So you can start off fairly simply by kind of moving the hips one way to the other side and then get the torso involved as well. You can do what you like with the arms. They're kind of an extension of the torso. They can stay close or they can move with you. Then you can kind of come into some movement forwards and backwards for the spine. I like to take my hands to my chest and my belly to almost act as like a little guide. So kind of think of like doing the worm but standing. And there's no right or wrong way how to do this, it's just simply taking our spine through some wavy movement. Cool. And back to a little bit of stillness. Last thing we're going to have a look at is something called toe scrunches. It's a little bit of a weird exercise and you might get like a slight cramping sensation to the arch of your foot, but it's a good little um, exercise for toe mobility. We might use it later on as well. So. Just take your hands onto your hips. You're just going to start by trying to lift all of your toes off the floor and then place them back down to the ground. We go one at a time. You're just going to try to scratch the right foot into the ground and the toes and see if it almost like pulls you forwards. Left toes scratch, right toes. And then you might find that you fall into a rhythm and you actually start to move forwards. <laughs> so if I was facing the side, you would see that with the act of like toe scrunching, I'm pulling myself forwards bit by bit. You might find it easier to do both feet at a time. I find it more challenging but that's why we're all different. See what you want to do and if you're really not getting far that's absolutely fine. Even the act of just practicing this you will create stronger connections mind to body. Cool and then shake it all up. Lovely. So we're going to come into our first sequence. So if you grab hold of your block, your brick, just take it in between both hands for now. We're going to spread the toes onto the right leg and just redistribute all of our body weight onto it. 
We're going to start by lifting left knee upwards, try and bring it parallel to your hip. And then from here, this is our starting kind of foundational part of the sequence. You're then going to extend your left leg behind and see if you can tap the brick to the ground with either both hands or one hand. And then bring that knee all the way back to the chest. So let's just do it one more time together. Send that leg behind, brick to the ground, and then knee all the way back to the chest. Now it's over to you to play a little bit more. Maybe you find like a sweet spot where the brick is to the ground and you just want to play with having the back leg into different positions, sending it to the floor if you want. Or maybe when you bring that knee back to the chest, you can play around with straightening that leg taking it through different positions as well, if you want to do dance or anything else. Basically, this is your chance to just move and explore. You can just stick to what we were doing earlier as well, maybe work on just refining and understanding it. Okay, so next time, you take your brick to the ground, take it in front of the right foot, keep the right hand onto it, left hand to left foot, and then we're going to slowly open the hips towards the left hand side as we come into half moon. It's up to you where you want to take it. You can keep the left hand to your hip or you can lift it above the head. You can float the right hand to the ground or off the brick, whatever you like. But this is the holding position. Take one more breath here. Now you're going to bend the right leg, let the left foot come to the ground, release the block, and then take warrior two. Just gonna have a play here. So we're gonna start easy. Start by just moving in and out of that front knee. And then we can maybe lift up the heel, lift up the toe. We can maybe bend into the back leg, front leg straight. And I always tend to, when I like play with a sort of more traditional pose, I always start from the bottom and then I move up from my body. So legs are going, <laughs> now I can get spine more involved side to side, then arms can get more involved. Sort of take it wherever you want to, wherever you feel drawn to. Because as much as I love just holding positions, sometimes I love the ability and the freedom to just play and to just move. Cool. Take maybe two more breaths here, just going and doing what you like. And settling all the way back to where you to. Okay, let's straighten up the right leg. Turn the toes to face the same direction as the back foot. Have a little wriggle into your hips. And you're just gonna hold your opposite shoulders. So kind of wrapping the hands around your body. Take a nice deep breath in. And then exhale to fold yourself forwards, bend your knees if you need. Taking your time to look behind you, to settle into the fold. Legs bend as much as you like. Breathing all the way down the spine. Now in this pose, we are just holding, we're finding stillness to observe how like previous movement might impact how the body responds to a hold. Just kind of exploring the duality between. If you wanted to do micro movements to the hips, you're welcome to. I'm just gonna take one more breath here. And start to ever so slightly look forwards, release your hands down to the ground and then walk them round to the top of your mat, turning your toes with you. And then when you're ready from here, stepping back into your downward facing dog. I'm just going to take a couple of breaths here. So feel free to wriggle around, feel free to move into head, hips, shoulders, whatever. Before we come into the other side. Cool. So when you're ready, looking forwards to the hands, you can step, tiptoe, walk, jump your feet all the way to the top of the mat, and we'll just do a lovely sort of roll through the spine to come all the way back to standing. Okay, let's do the other side. So once again, brick into both hands, distribute and spread the weight into your left foot. And again, we will start by bringing the right knee up parallel-ish to the hip. And then extend right leg behind. See if you can tap the brick to the floor. And then resetting, coming all the way back. Knee to chest. Don't worry if you need to wobble and fall. Last time together, extend. Tap the ground. 
and slowly come all the way back up. So that movement's very similar to RDLs and resistance training. And then take it where you want to go. Remember you can hold the leg behind and maybe you tap the ground with the right foot in different angles. You can practice a warrior three pose. Anything else that you did on the previous side or things that you didn't think of and now you're like, oh cool, I wanna take it there. Just do whatever you want. Remember, if you need to fall and take a break, let it happen. Just come back to wherever you want to. Okay, when you're ready, let's take that left hand on top of the brick, brick to the floor just in front of the left foot. Kick the right leg behind with the right hand onto your hip and slowly rotate, opening to the right hand side. If you again want to release the top hand, you can. One more breath. Then bend the left leg, bring the right toes to the ground. Just take a moment, settle yourself into warrior two. And then let's move again, starting with the legs. Toes, ankles, back leg can bend. Just have that little aspect of play. Move your hands with you. Move that spine. Again, no wrong or right way how to move. <laughs> it's all about just finding your own expression. Depends how you feel in your body today, where it's tight, where it's loose, where it's mobile, where you feel energetic, where you feel tired. So yeah, it's quite a nice practice to do regardless of your current state. <laughs> okay, let's settle back into warrior two. And then straighten up front leg. Turn all 10 toes to face, the long edge of your mat. Let's hold again opposite shoulders, but try go the opposite way around. So right elbow is on top, switch it around, so left elbow is on top. Take an inhale, wriggle the hips. And exhale, bend knees, folding yourself forwards. Let the head relax. Let the body sway if it wants to, or you can just slowly melt into the pose. And maybe you kind of feel the breath moving into the palms, depending on where you're holding your body. Okay, let's take one more breath here. And then slowly release your hands to the ground, lift the chest looking forwards, walk the hands round with you, the toes as well, so we face the top of the mat, and then stepping back, into our downward facing dog. So again, taking a couple moments here to wriggle around, to move, to listen, to see what's going on in your body. And then we're going to change it and come down into some sort of more floor-based movement. Okay. So from your downward dog, when you're ready, you're gonna take an inhale to float your right leg straight behind you in the air into three-legged dog. Look forwards to the hands, stack your shoulders, and then see if you can step that right foot forwards. You're gonna drop your left knee to the ground and push through, reach the hands up and above your head. So this is our starting position. We're gonna just bend into that front leg and maybe take a cactus position with the arms so you can kind of like encourage your chest and the spine to come more into extension. And then we're gonna drop the chin to our chest Start to push the hips behind us, hands can come down to the ground and we just kind of lift the front toes off the floor. So half splits. Then again, we can bend and open. And then create a forward fold, move the spine more into flexion. Cool, and now you can take it wherever you want to. So maybe instead of cactus arms, you kind of twist to one side or you lean to one side. Again, same thing when you move back, you don't have to fold directly into the leg. You can twist to either side. You can be more upright. You can reach for the foot. Just start to see where you wanna take it, where you wanna go. If you wanna just hold one of the positions as well, that's completely fine. And another final juicy option, which I really enjoy, is seeing if I can lift my back leg up as well either with hands on the ground to the knee or hips or up. 
that's quite a nice one as well to play with. Okay, let's take about two more breaths here, wherever you want to take it. Cool, and then you're just going to reset and rebend, coming back to your hour lunge position. Okay, so this left ankle, this left lower leg is now going to swivel behind the knee, so we kind of open our hips up to the left hand side of our mat. If you wanted a pillow underneath that bent leg, feel free. But now into our hold, we're going to take our hands down, sort of in between the legs. So thinking about, again, this 45 degree angle. Walk your hands, your fingertips away from you as far as you want. And you're going to drop your chin to your chest. In fact, it's sometimes quite nice to start with the hand onto the block. And just breathing here. What I've seen some students do before is allow their butt to come back to their heel and like um, the front leg to bend away from them a bit more. So that's quite a nice option if you wanted to play with that too. Just see where you're at. You can obviously adjust as we go through the hold as well. You don't have to stay in the position that you started in. Okay, let's take one more breath here. And then looking forwards, push through the hands, bring yourself all the way back upwards. So this is where the toe scrunches come in. They're gonna to start to scrunch the right toes away from us. And when that leg goes straight, you're gonna pivot the toe inwards so that your hips and your body start to face a long edge off your mat again. Okay, so when you're ready, you're gonna take your inhale, reach your hands up. And then exhale, take your right hand to the right leg, left hand reaches up and over the head. And then we come all the way back to the middle. And then over to the other side, so left hand down, right hand reaches. So again, this is kind of the foundation. We start by lifting and twisting side to side. Then we can start to create other things. Maybe you sweep the arms in front of you instead and lift up. Maybe when the left hand is down, the right leg lifts. You play with a little bit of movement there. You could even play with a hip hinging action, so leaning the chest forwards and back up. Or well, the final little bit is maybe moving without the arms. So coming into more sort of work for the obliques, for the trunk, for the core. Cool. Wherever you are, take your time, bring your shoulders back over your hips. Bit of a weird transition to seated. You're going to start by taking your hands down to the ground, just kind of in front of your hips. And then walk the left hand round to the side, and you're just going to scooch your left foot inwards, and then sit down on your butt. <laughs> so we come to a Janu Shashasana kind of pose. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh, and we're actually going to fold in between our knees, as opposed to folding into the front leg. So have your block to hand if you like. Let's just take an inhale, reach the hands up. And then exhale, fingertips down in between the knees, walk them away as much as you are comfortable with. Drop the chin to the chest as you fold. Remember hands can be to the block or elbows or forehead. Whatever feels good here. Allow that right leg to relax as well if the toes wanted to kind of gently fall inwards, let it happen. Good. Okay. One more breath here. And then inhale, slowly bring yourself all the way back upright. Just release that left leg, let it go straight, give it a little shake. And then we'll come back to down dog. So just cross the legs in, see if you can roll forwards and step yourself back. And as always, once you're here, have a little shake, have a little wriggle side to side. Cool. Sweet. Let's explore the other side. So when you're ready, inhale, float your left leg straight behind you. Step it in between the hands as you bring your shoulders over the wrists and drop your right knee down to the floor. So again, we're gonna start by bringing the hands above the head into our lunge position. Cool. So when you're ready, bend into the front leg, cactus the arms, lift the chest, and then pop it all the way back to this half splits position, front leg straight, rounding the spine, dropping down. 
And then again, moving forwards, maybe you take the hands behind the head and you let it rest. And again, you can keep them there as you move back. Start to take it through your own creativity, your own pace. Remember the spine moves in so many various directions. Arms act as an extension of it sometimes. You can even lift up the front heel. And I didn't say this last time, but maybe in this half splits you think about trying to lift that knee off the floor. Just for a little bit, something extra. Cool. Think about lifting back foot as well. Wherever you want to take it. Okay, and when you're ready, coming all the way back into your low lunge. This time, hands to the hips, swivel the right foot behind that knee. So again, hips open towards the long edge of our mat. From here, have your block handy. Take your hands down to that 45 degree angle, walking them away. Drop the chin to your chest. And as you come into this position, if you want to let the body weight sit back into um, the heel, you're welcome to. But most important thing, always just allowing the breath to guide you into the position. If the breath feels easy, maybe it's an indicator that you can go deeper. If the breath feels restricted for whatever reason, maybe just take yourself out of that deep range. Okay. One more breath. And then pushing through, take your time, come all the way back up into this lunge position. And toe scrunches in the left foot, moving it away. Eventually when it's straight enough, turning the toes inwards, moving your hips as well to face the long edge of the mat. Okay, inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, left hand to left thigh, right hand reaches up and over. Moving all the way back up and then switching sides. So take right hand down to the ground, left hand reaches. Last time with me, moving up and then over and moving up again and then over to the right hand side. Now change it up. Maybe you want to create these lovely sweeps side to side. Maybe we add in a lift to the left leg. You can hold, you can change the position of the top arm. You can do this hip hinging action to move more into the ability and strength of the muscles on the inner and outer thigh. I didn't say this last time, but you can also practice partridge pose where you catch that top leg and you create a little hold. But yeah, again, take it wherever you want to. Move the spine, move the torso. Lovely. Okay, and then when you're ready, all the way back, shoulders over the hips. We transition down to seated, hands to the floor. Move that right foot in a little bit. Maneuver yourself down to the ground. It doesn't really matter where you end up facing direction-wise, but just make sure right foot's to the inside of the left thigh. You can place your block in between the knees. Let's take an inhale, reach hands up. And then exhale, folding ourselves forwards. Sometimes it's quite nice to let your head rest into um, your hands on top of the block or the floor. Like I said, see where you start and where you want to go in this position. Allow the left foot to gently relax. And you might find that after the kind of exploration and play that we do in the previous poses, that you might have more room to move when it comes to the holds. Because again, like I kind of keep saying, motion is lotion for the body. Movement always helps when it comes to holding positions or just experiencing different aspects of the body. Okay, one more breath here. And then slowly pushing, coming all the way back up. Just straighten up the right leg, give it a little shake. And then we'll move on to our final sequence. So cross your legs in, rock forwards, back into your downward facing dog. Having a little shake here, side to side. Okay. And then when you are ready from here, let's bring the knees down to the floor. 
and then push your hands coming all the way up to a kneeling position. So this is called dancing camel, just to kind of start coming into it. You can either do it with your toes tucked, or you can have it with your feet flat. Completely up to you. But you're just going to start by dropping your butt down to your heels. So you allow the chest to lean forwards a little bit. And then you're going to kind of just explode forwards, squeeze the butt, <laughs> bring it back under the hips, under the shoulders. Then again, butt down, and then forwards. Now we can invite a twist in, so take hands across your chest, drop the butt, explode forwards, rotate to the right. Back to the middle, drop down, explode forwards, rotate to the left. Now again, drop the butt down, forwards to the right, reach the right hand behind. To the middle, drop down, forwards, rotate to the left, left hand behind. Now this is where we bring in the full movement, drop the butt down, Rotate to the right, right hand to right heel, left hand on top. Move it forwards, drop your butt, left hand, left heel, right hand on top. And then you can just start to play. You can make it more swoopy, coming forwards, side to side. You can hold a little bit longer if it feels good. You can really work with your breath. If you practice full camel at home, you can kind of do full transitions side to side. But again, allow yourself to stick to whatever one felt best for you. If it was one of the first options, stick with that. Or challenge yourself, see where you're at today. Okay. Wherever you are from here, come down into child's pose. Walk the hands maybe out in front of you to start with, or if you'd like to take them by your side, you're welcome to go with that. In fact, I saw one of my students a couple years ago <laughs> thread all her hands in between her legs and then sort of take um, her left ear to the ground or right ear. And that was quite a nice, cosy way to take child's pose. <laughs> Just change where you're looking, maybe halfway through. Okay, let's take two more breaths here. And then from your child's pose, kind of just manoeuvre so the arms are back out in front of you if they were in a different direction. And then we're just going to roll onto our belly and extend the legs behind us. So we come down onto the floor and we're going to start with our palms underneath our shoulders. And you can either tuck your toes or have them flat, kind of just like we did before. So this is called cobra waves, is what I call it. Start with your forehead to the ground and then you're going to Peel the forehead, the chin, the chest off the ground as high as you want to go. And then kind of reconnect and bring it all the way back down. And again, you can peel and lift. Maybe you go a little bit higher. Use the legs, push into the ground, and then wave to the floor. Now you can take your hands wider. Maybe you come up onto your fingertips. And then wave again. Just slowly moving up and down. And then maybe you start to roll side to side with the shoulders, create these lovely kind of movements where the shoulders go into and out of internal rotation. It's quite a nice sensation. See where you want to go. You can lift the feet off the ground. Again, take it in whatever kind of way. Another thing that you can also do is grounding the forearms, the elbows, and then just thinking of lifting the belly and the hip bones off the floor, and then back to sphinx. So I'm just giving you guys a couple different ways that you can move. Just see what suits you most. Okay, this will be our last kind of bit of exploration. Lovely. And then when you're ready, you're just going to lie down on your belly, make a pillow with your hands, just let your hips rock themselves side to side. And then from here we're going to bend the right leg and then you scoop that right knee up towards the right elbow. So this is how I sleep, so this is really comfortable. And you're just going to let your left ear come down into the hand so you're looking to the right elbow. I call this pose lion lizard, so you're just going to stay, you're just going to breathe, you're just going to hold here. 
It doesn't matter how high or how low that right knee is. Again, just take it into whatever position. Going for one more breath here. And then slowly, slowly bring the chin back to your chest. Reset that right leg, give the hips a little bit of a rock. And then we'll move over to the other side. So bring the left knee as high up as you want to. Look over to the left elbow. Just holding, just breathing here. Keeping that breath nice and relaxed. And when you're ready, slowly, slowly reset that leg. Bring the chin back to your chest. Final little few moves. I know I only have a bit more. You're just going to roll onto your back. Bring the knees up to your chest and let yourself rock side to side. So you're going to come into a spinal twist. Here's some movement for the arms. So drop your knees down to the right hand side. You can take it as a single leg twist or knees together or if you like twist your legs around one another, you can go for that. And just hold the knees with the right arm and extend your left arm away from you. Now that left arm can stay to the ground, but what we can explore is just starting with the left hand down to like your butt. And then you create a big circle up and over the head, over the shoulders, and bring that hand back round to where your knees are. So the hand can stay close to the ground as it moves forwards and backwards between these two positions. So you're thinking of like almost creating like a big halo shape around your body. Or it can be floating off the ground. And you can bend it, you can take the arm straight, doesn't really matter. Take it in whatever way you want to. Next time left arm reaches sort of in line with the shoulder, bring the knees back to the chest. And then over to the other side, and right arm extends away, left hand to hold the legs. And then again, you can start with the right hand down by your butt, reach up over the head, and around. It's just quite a nice way sometimes to allow the shoulders to move in this twist and allow the thoracic spine to as well. Again, you kind of take it how you want to. Also, you might find a really nice position to just bring the arm into and hold. We'll take one more breath here. And then as the right arm resets, bring the knees back to the chest and let's come into happy baby for our final position. So knees towards the chest, feet go up to the ceiling, and you can hold the toes, you can hold the feet, you can hold the legs, wherever you want to. And maybe we're still, or maybe we do find movement. You can even like straighten up the legs a little bit. Just see what you want to do. Okay, let's take two more breaths here. And then when you're ready, just release, hug your knees in, rocking side to side. Roll over to the right or the left. Slowly push yourself all the way back up to seated. Take a moment, maybe just settle your gaze to the floor or close down your eyes. Let your hands rest onto your lap. And just express a little bit of thanks to yourself for bringing this kind of playful attitude and creativity and energy to class. Exploring different ways of moving your body, but also bringing in the holds as well. But also perhaps most importantly, carving out time in the day just for you to move and get in touch and embody yourself. Cool. So rubbing the palms together, bringing some warmth, take your hands over your eyes and bring yourself back when you're ready. So thank you so much for practicing with me. I really, really hope you enjoyed and yeah, I will see you next time. <laughs>